Today's class is on uh, business negotiation, but let me just do a quick introduction. Uh, all of those who have been introduced to me uh, before, you may go and get your coffee, <laughs> and I will now do it for the rest. You all don't disturb us. Um, where? I must look for different Wait. I will, because I think quite a few are new, but some the stalkers are few, so that's okay. Ah, there you go. Right. Um, yeah, this is to introduce uh, myself uh, for those of you who are not familiar. Hopefully, by before the end of the whole program, you know, and other courses, maybe you come to my class, you will already be familiar. Uh, we can be familiar with each other, in fact. Uh, so, some points about me. Uh, a good uh, start is always to introduce oneself. Uh, simply because if you understand the experience, you will know that I have some experience, then you all also have some experience. So as we are discussing um, uh, uh, matters as we go along, we can draw on our work experience. When I say experience, I'm referring to work experience, right? Um, where you worked before, uh, uh, and the different things that you have done. Some of you may have been working in many different industries. Some of you may work only in one industry or in one uh, particular uh, organization. Right, it doesn't matter. But the point is, if we can have that sharing, then everybody will benefit. You know, we can learn something, and I can learn something as well. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, I must tell you, uh, <laughs> I must tell you something. Yesterday again, you know, for the first time, I had a class where uh, one of my students, you know, what what is his job? He's a sailor. How cool is that? The guy's a sailor. Have you ever met a sailor? I bet you haven't. Have you ever met a sailor, Tavenes Swari? Hello, sir. Hi, morning. Sometimes when you go and meet people and you get introduced, mm -hmm. has anyone said, some people may say, oh, what, what do you do? Oh, I'm a teacher. Or I'm an engineer or something. But have you ever met somebody who says, I'm a sailor? No. No, of course not. It's so cool. But in my class... I had two things. One was a guy who was, he was actually a sailor and he could, he could drive boats, <laughs> you know, ships. Okay, sailor, okay, I understand. Ah, sailor. sailor. And sailor, okay, yeah. No, no, not tailor, la. not tailor. Sailor, tailor, yeah. Yeah, tailor. yeah, no, no, not tailor. It's sailor, I said sa sailor, yeah. Sailor, ah, so sailor. And then another guy, you know, uh, uh, this lady in my class, her husband is a soldier. She said, my husband is a soldier. How cool is that? Again, I never met uh, anyone who, who, who was a soldier, right? Um, it is so, so interesting uh, professions. And, and very, very, uh, I think, a uh, lot of skill. A right? lot of skill involved in all that. So, yeah. So I'm sure some of you here may, we'll see. I'm going to pick on some of you later on to see what industries you all are in, because uh, these are things that I, I need to know more about, actually, to be honest. Right, so introducing myself to you, for those who are new, uh, well, that's my name. Uh, my name is not Professor, Doctor, whatever nonsense. My name is Roland, you <laughs> know, Roland. <laughs> that's what uh, everyone who knows me, and a lot of my MBA, uh, MBA students become my good friends. So, you know, so it's really nice. Um, yeah, the good news I have for all of you this morning is that I can read and write, right? And as you can see here, well proven that I have a, at least a law degree at some point, <laughs> MBA uh, from Charles Sturt University, where I, I was a valedictorian. Yeah, that's right. I was a valedictorian for that year. Uh, my doctorate, of course, uh, uh, also from Newcastle, Australia. I'm also on some editorial board. So maybe sometimes, uh, who knows, maybe in future you are writing papers and all that. You never know. I read the papers and I see the name Khalifa No Binti Kamarudin. This sound, sounds very familiar. <laughs> name. Ah. And then I say, hey, Allah, Khalifa is in my class. I will get your paper published. <laughs> so uh, then you know, you know people. Uh, Next is uh, business experience. Um, uh, I used to, when I first started working, I was with Anderson Consulting. I worked there for about four or five years there. Um, very good experience. Worked in several, um, consulting for several different industries, mainly to the banking 
and financial services industry. So can, then I was a country manager for Asia Pub and Asia Pub and Paper is a um, part of the Sinarmas Group of Indonesia. A APP or Asia Pub and Paper is a New York listed company, right? So they had a hundred thousand over staff and fifty four offices. So I was running the Malaysian office. Uh, then I started a company myself called Direct 2000, 97. Then I sold it off. Then I started, uh, not, not just me, but me and me, one Indonesian guy and two guys from India. We came up with a business plan and we started a company called EPUP and Paper. And we ran that successfully for uh, seven years. I could tell you a story about that. It was very interesting, actually. I could have retired even earlier, but... <clears throat> Uh, 2000, there was a dot-com crash. If it, there was no dot-com crash, that same year we were looking at getting listed in uh, in Singapore. Uh, but that didn't happen because of the dot-com crash, but still we ran it uh, and it was okay. Then uh, after that, I retired very early. Um, and I did what I really loved doing, which is research. It's really good, really, really good. And I joined the university. Uh, right, and uh, hi, North Shahida. <laughs> and uh, then I, I recently, <clears throat> after I retired and I'm doing my research work, which is something that I'm absolutely passionate about, I really enjoy. It's not work, actually. I can't call it work. Uh, it's just a joy. Uh, and soon then, I started a, this Joy Factory, which is a not-for-profit organization, actually. It's to help OKU children who are and provide them with fitness and exercise for OKU special kids. Uh, so this one, I do it with my son, my my daughter, my sorry, my, my wife, we all, uh, and a few other volunteers. Uh, it's a non-profit organization. Uh, then uh, current consultancy project, I am doing with, of course, Toyota Tushu. I've been doing with Toyota Tushu now for almost more than 10 years. And I've done a lot of consultancy projects um, for banks, especially CIMB Bank, and, and quite a few. So again, uh, this experience is very useful when it comes to uh, working with you as my students, because you all are also working. Uh, so we can share and hopefully help you to be successful in your organization as well. That's the best part, right? Okay, that's the best learning. So that's that's about, that's about what you can ask me anything you want. Any questions if you have? Ah, my show off page, as I call it, my show off page, <laughs> my grants. Uh, individually, just by myself, I've got grants a lot, um, almost 3.5 million, right? 2 million of that from Canada, IDRC. I never take grants locally. I never, you know why? Because it is nonsense. They'll give you grant la 25,000, Tiga Pro Vibu, ah, Khalifa. No impact whatsoever. <laughs> I don't waste my time. So my grants come internationally where the standards are pretty high. I'm happy to say. I'm happy to say that because it irritates me when people take grants from the government and do something that is not useful. That's not helping the community or the rakyat, nobody. They have what such a, right? What is the outcome? Does it impact people? No. It's not action research. It's academic research. And in my opinion, academic research is a waste of time and academics should not be paid. I know, academics should not be paid because if you don't do anything useful, why should I pay you? <laughs> Still that. Ah, so if, if I'm teaching you, I must impact your life la, and make things happen for you. Then it's really important. I did that about research and it's so simple to do, right? And everybody pretends that it's hard. Nonsense. You come to me, I'll do it for you. Right, really. I publish so many papers. I don't even bother to write any more papers unless it's impactful. Right. Uh, otherwise, no. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah. And the Ministry of Higher Education said that I was the national outstanding researcher for the entrepreneurship category. <clears throat> it was very kind of them. I didn't even buy them any coffee. Uh, I was the national <clears throat> outstanding. Uh, educator Award also from the Ministry of Higher Education and the Joy Factory we submitted in 2020 and we were the finalists, right? That was that, right? But you know, Khalifa, I'm very unhappy because in 2018, I was only the finalist. 
out of five people out of the whole country, they, they shortlisted to five. And I was uh, one of the five. But I didn't win, which is not fair. You know it's not fair. You know it's not fair. You come from my classes, you're stalking me, so you must know that it's not fair. I should have won. I should have won, won the, the, the award. And the guy who won the award, he was shorter than me. He didn't look as good as me as well. So I'm not sure. <laughs> sour grapes. <laughs> this is called sour grapes. <laughs> I'm not happy. I am not happy. I'm not happy. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sharing with you regional uh, publications that I've done globally and regionally because uh, if tomorrow you're doing something, you need some help, assistance, you know, yeah, especially in research, you're going to do a research. You're going to do a research paper, right, at the end. Right. All right. Any of you have problems? I can assist you. Let me know. Okay. Uh, so we got. Uh, I did a global report. This is really impactful because it's uh, it's like the World Bank report. It's like the um, Global Innovation report. This is the Global Entrepreneurship report in 2012. We covered 77 countries, which was about 90% of the world's economies. So it's huge. Um, uh, if you want, you can download it. You can read it. I'll give you the link as well. Uh, and how is this useful for you? You're asking. Is that the question? Well, I'll tell you. For those of you who cannot sleep at night, you get the book. You read two pages, I guarantee you, you will fall asleep. <laughs> it is that interesting. So, <laughs> Khalifa, kalau you tak boleh tidur, you get this book. Free of charge. You download, you baca. Sebelum tidur, you, uh, malam you tak boleh tidur kan, you baca the book. After the two pages, sure you fall asleep, man. I guarantee you. All right. Uh, then the other one is the regional entrepreneurship no report. Hmm? What's that? <laughs> sure, not boleh tidur. Kalau, kalau sure, tidur, can. Tidur, siapa ini? Tidur, because you read is so boring. <laughs> the book is so boring. <laughs> That's why you will fall asleep. The regional report, um, I was the first one to write an ASEAN regional report. So I wrote it in 2014-15, 2015-16. Two, two reports, I wrote that one. But I didn't continue doing it like, because I kind of get bored of it easily because it's after a while it becomes a bit easy and uh, just repeating it is not useful. So anyway, once it's done, it's done. We want to learn new things. Huh? So uh, I put the links here as well so that you know that it's for real. Um, <clears throat> so we've got in, in Uni Raza some pretty good uh, researchers. Right? Class house rules, I think um, this one is just I don't think you need it. <clears throat> and basically, this is useful for class. <laughs> one voice, I told you before, isn't it? One voice, whose voice? It's me. When I speak, switch off your mic. You listen to me. and Because you are mere minions. Minions. Khalifa has come for two classes. So she got two eyes. Uh, those of you who came for the first class, you only got one eye. Okay? Just let you know. Yeah. And... Uh, so you should listen, okay? <laughs> but also, I'm very fair. We want equal voice, right? Now. We don't want just one person to speak. We want all of you to have a chance to share, though it's going to be a little bit challenging considering the big class and all that. Um, be present, right? Try to make sure your camera is on. Usually if your camera is on, you'll find that you'll pay more attention. The camera is off. Yes, you'll pay attention for a while. You know that attention span is equivalent to your age. So if you're 30 years old, your attention span is only 30 minutes. After that, you're gone, right? So, and it's worse when your camera is not on, worse you'll be gone, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> uh, and make sure you switch off your speaker, right? Sometimes some students are, are you be sing, forget to on off the speaker, why not? And then uh, their wife is calling them in the background and we, everybody can hear, we don't want to know that. <laughs> No need lah. You know, keep that to yourself. <laughs> I'm sure. My wife never scolds me. Never scolds me because I always do the right thing. <laughs> Online camera, same thing. Man. Guys, the other thing is timekeeping. Sangat penting. Later, I'll explain more to you about this one. But keeping to time, coming to class on time, right? 
very important. Sometimes things come in late, right? We can't do anything about it, but you should know, right? Otherwise, you're losing out. Uh, also, in terms of submissions, uh, we'll talk a bit more about that. I'll explain to you, okay? Uh, Urox, uh, this is the question. We always come to this. Your Urox, sangat penting, guys. Urox, sangat penting. It is our, the place where we meet, where all the notes are there, where all the information is there. You must go to Urox. Surprisingly, you'll find as we go along, some students never even go to Urox, never read the notes, nothing. And then sometimes they send me a WhatsApp and ask me a question. And usually, I, if I don't answer the question, chances are it's because it's not worth answering because the answer is already there. Either we already discussed in class or it's on Urox. So uh, if you're not paying attention, I cannot be answering students separately. Yeah? That won't happen. So please uh, try your best. And also it's recorded so you have the information available to you. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. For all the new students, who can tell me what Urox stand for? I want to know. Alicia, are you there? Hi, Prof. I'm here, but uh, I'm not sure what it means. You're not sure? Okay, that might no problem. No problem. It's cool. Roshan. Roshan Nathan. Roshan. Alicia, is this your first class? Uh, not sure. Or are you in the second sem or something? Yeah, this is my first class. First uh, class, This huh? is my uh, second, second last sem, actually. Oh, your second last sem. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you've been using Eurox, right? Yeah, but I don't know what it means. Ah, good. <laughs> Dinesha. Miss, um, I think it's Miss Dinesha. MK. Yep, yeah. Hi, Dinesha. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure as well. <laughs> you're good, lah. Like, you're uh, bagus, lah. Like. Tomorrow, uh, when people say, "Hey, who taught you all uh, uh, business negotiation?" Not sure, lah. Like. <laughs> the guy, one guy, good-looking guy, but I don't know his name. <laughs> last time we had called LMS last year. Learning oh, last management LMS. system. Yeah. Last semester you didn't use uh, Eurox. Uh, no, I mean the Eurox uh, name normally uh, last time is calling uh, learning management system, but now they stand for Eurox, but don't know what the Eurox stand for. I but see. last time it's a system management, learning management. Mm -hmm. So it looks like most of you know, but I can tell you guys, but here's the thing, don't know, it's not a problem. If you don't know, say don't know, no worries at all, guys. This is what we're here for. But my point is, I forgot, I want to tell all of you, very important. I want you today, after class, to measure the circumference of your head. You understand? Use a tape measure. Roslinda, tape measure. You know the, the clock tape measure to okay. measure something? You measure the circumference of your head after class. Okay, all of you. You know why? I'm telling you in six weeks, your head will be bigger. You attend my class for six weeks, your, your brain is going to grow. Rosalina. Hopefully, yes. sir. <laughs> yeah. What mean hopefully? Don't say hopefully. I'm working hard here. You're saying hopefully. <laughs> you must come for class. You must listen. You you will become smarter. And in this the next five minutes, I'm going to make, even now, under, you see, for example, Rosalina, you said you don't know uh, what Europe stands for. No problem. I will teach you. Yeah, and you okay. will know. That's great. And your brain capacity will grow. And it's so awesome. Bro, right? Can I try Ah, yes. Yes, Shamala. Probably it's Uni Raza online experience. No, Lord. You see, you see, Shamala. I, I just Google it. You, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. I know, sure, you're Google one, but no problem. If you think your Google is smarter than me, in the six <laughs> weeks, you will realize that the real Google it. of Google, Google, when you Google, Google, Google Googles me to get the answer. How's that? <laughs> Shamala, I'm not kidding you. I'm telling you, Google Googles me for some of the answers. Google doesn't know. Because right? you're that smart. Thank you very much. That's what my wife says as well all the time. You think you're very smart? 
nice to know you, bro. I tell you, your wives are very bad, you know, because they always tell you to your face, you know. They don't care. They have no respect at all. They don't care whether you are whatever also. I just said, ah, yeah, yeah. You think you're smart. <laughs> but today, today, Shamla, just for you and Rosalinda, I'm going to show you that Google doesn't know. <laughs> ah, you all thought Google knows. I'm going to show you now. Okay, so you will learn something. And don't forget, at the end of the class, measure your head. Okay, are you ready for the answer? Okay. Okay, here you go. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Roslinda, come on. Roslinda, come on. That's the acronym. What do you mean? <laughs> Baru tau. Tau, Khalifa, tell them. Tell them. Now need they know. Uh, Google pula. Apa benda? No wonder don't give it any answer. Lah, so. <laughs> we just got speechless. <laughs> What's that, Shamala? We got, yeah, speechless, actually. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Even Chat GPT doesn't know. Chat GPT only goes until 2022. All right? My information is always up to date. It's current. It's what happened and is going to happen. It's currently happening. Right? I'm talking about... I was talking to my students about the mount, the mountain in... in um, in Indonesia, that was erupting and so on. Uh, ChatGPT doesn't know nothing. Uh, it's got some old information. It's useful as a library. That's about all. But don't worry. Yeah, so we live with we <laughs> Shamla. <laughs> Shamla, if you go and tell management about this, they'll sack me. Then I'll just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> good girl. Okay. All because right, I need good marks. <laughs> We need good marks, so we will keep our mouth shut. <laughs> you are so bad. Huh? <laughs> okay, now mind, guys, let's get on with it. Get on with it. We time was of essence. Okay, guys. The other thing is, just try and remember to upload your pictures live. You can onto onto um, uh, firstly on the Zoom, uh, and also uh, onto uh, Urox. Urox also you have got this icon where you can upload your picture and upload a clear picture. Don't upload a picture with a mask. Some of you are putting up a picture with a mask. I can't see your face. Uh, why? Because we're talking about attendance and participation, right? So you say Shamala. There's so many Shamalas. I've got so many students in so many classes, right? I can't remember. But it's a picture we, we, you generally remember, right? So it's in your, uh, to your benefit, lah, huh? if you upload your picture, that's good. Huh? So um, respond in Eurox. Look at Eurox. Uh, all information will be there, right? Uh, and then, of course, we will. We want to also form uh, an up a WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, I'm sure y'all uh, who can form a WhatsApp group are uh, here. Uh, Shamla, can are you? I think they're probably uh, created <laughs> one. Let me try. Just uh, just create one. Okay. Uh, put uh, B business BNCM. But the title, I must put BNCM, uh, this is the month, May 2024. Or put May 24. Because there are many groups. So it, uh, it can be a bit confusing uh, for me at least. Uh. So just put uh, BNCM, May 24. Uh, then we know that it is this particular group. Uh. Uh, then uh, it's all, it, and this is a help to all our friends as well. So like uh -huh. Kavaneswari, Susan, you all can. Guys, if you can uh, give your phone number uh, to, uh, I will create are, one how? and share here, bro. Come again. I will create one and I'll I'll share the link here in the uh, ah, chat ah, box. Ah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Huh? Um, better lah, because in case you know why the, the actually the WhatsApp is uh, not so much for me, but I do sometimes put up uh, urgent announcements. Uh, but also for your, for each of you. And I noticed that the students are very cooperative, which is really good. So let's say if you miss something or you're not sure or something you ask and then your, your friends can assist you as well. Right? Not, so, uh, so we all work together as a team um, and there's no I in team. So I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not in team. I am not in team. Okay, and then, uh, okay guys, so that's on the WhatsApp thingy. Uh, just include my number as well. I'll give you later. 
on time assignments important i'll talk about that again uh, and then of course to access all the materials okay uh, i would normally do something like this like short name where are you from what industry are you in uh, but I can't do it with um, all of the classes. Otherwise, it takes me more than three or four hours. Uh, maybe I'll just um, check out a few people. Uh, Wong see me. Are you there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. My so, name. Uh, uh, oh, oh, short oh, name. Oh. See me. S-I-M-M-I-E. <laughs> Not S-E-E-M-E-E. -E -E. S-I? M-M-I-E. Yes, sir. Yes. Then why, then why you I use this name. I, I actually, that one is the full name. Uh. I use this name when I was in, uh, working, uh, giving name card. See me oh. wrong. S I M E E. Uh. S I M E. Mm. Okay. Where no am I from? Uh. From Slang or I'm from Sungai Bulu, Bukit Raman Putra. Oh, okay, very nice. And uh, what? Mm. Are, you, if you, are you working now? Yes, I'm working as a senior sales manager uh, at. um. I'm actually doing a chemical sales. Chemical. I'm not. I'm not so uh, interested. Yeah, for the rest of you, I'm not interested in the position. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the industry. Mm -hmm. So it's in the chemical industry, la. Supply mm -hmm. chemical. Yes, yes. It's like uh, yes. is it Malaysian oxygen or are they all? Oh no, 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 no. Uh, no. Um, it's actually chemicals to those paint and coating industry, household and personal care. Wow, wow, that's quite uh, specialized, uh, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, yeah, I it's mean, actually a commodity. It's like petrol. It's like we are selling petrol, uh, gasoline. <laughs> wow. Same price, really? but many brand. Oh. I, Same price, many you... brand. What brand are you going to choose? Shell, Pat uh, Shell, VHP, Patron, or what? So, so see me when you say uh, uh, it's like a commodity. That means the most important thing is the pricing uh, and the service, right? Yes, yes. It's it's like and exactly... negotiation. Exactly, exactly. You so you, in this class is going to be very interesting for you. And because when I was in the paper industry, it's the same. It's also a commodity. Paper is a commodity. Even though technical specs can be quite different, but actually it's like a commodity. And there's no differentiation. Price is the most important thing. Negotiation yes. and relationships are very important. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. And I was the, before I, I was running the office, I was the national sales and marketing manager. So I covered the whole of Malaysia, uh, northern mm. side, central, and south. So I was doing the whole work. So, so I think <laughs> you and me will have a lot in common. <laughs> talk about that Quite okay okay yeah good good so happy to have you here uh let's let's uh, check with somebody else who might be around uh who's the lucky person uh <clears throat> azizi azizan are you there azizi what about uh sarat Right. So you've got a uh, Shaiful. Are you there, Shaiful Hadi? Oh yes, doctor. I'm here. Hi, Shaiful. Good morning. Morning to you. Yeah. So Shaiful, just checking. Uh, we're just doing a brief introduction for just one or two persons. So I guess we'll call you Shaiful. Uh, where are you from, uh, Shaiful? Uh, normally people call me Hadi, bro. <laughs> oh, Hadi, yeah? Okay, very good. We'll try to okay, remember that. <laughs> where are you from? Uh, I'm in Shah Alam. In Shah Alam. Okay, excellent. Uh, what industry are you in? Industry. Um, I'm doing my own stuff. My, I, I have my own company doing services, uh, consultancy and training in relation to equipment reliability. Ah, testing and all equipment testing is it? Uh, equipment reliability. We measure the equipment reliability in any manufacturer, any manufacturing facilities. So how could that all the uh, manufacturing equipment could uh, support the business to make the to make money lah? Wow, wow, that's that's sounds really quite specialized kind of. Um, uh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we look into from the mechanical aspect, the electrical yeah, instrumentation, yeah. all the processes into to improvise everything so that right. whatever the targeted amount of the production can be met at the end of the day. That's right. That's very important, isn't it? It's part yeah. of that. I guess TQM or whatever if you like. You know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's TPM, TQM, all this now. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm starting a paper with one of my PhD students on, on TQM, so it's quite interesting. But uh, good, good. Um, 
so negotiations uh, and whatever you're doing in MBA, you not only this course, other courses will be very relevant because you're already out there doing it. Huh? So exactly, exactly. Good, good, good. See, there's the thing, you see, guys, when we talk to people, uh, uh, our students, you can see that they have very interesting backgrounds and backgrounds in which we can, you know, either see similarities or we can learn something from them. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Good, good. Dinesha, are you there? Dinesha Mohan? Yep, I'm here. Uh, hi, Dinesha. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Dinesha, you know, I feel like I'm a radio DJ, you know. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm talking to people I can't see. So <laughs> now I know how the radio DJ feels. Um, so <laughs> how do we call you for short? Um, you can call me Dini. That's what my friends call me. Dini, is it? Yeah. Okay, Dini. So Dini, uh, where, where are you located? Um, I'm from Subang Jaya, so... Yep. No, not Subang Jaya. Yeah, <laughs> the Beverly Hills of Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> well, Which part of Subang Jaya is so huge? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm in USJ, so. Oh no, USJ is even larger. Which part yeah. of USJ? So USJ three, it's near Summit. USJ three, USJ three is near Summit. La. USJ two la, it's near Summit. Yeah, but it's the the area after that. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> good, good. Uh, and what industry are you in? Um, I'm in uh, learning and development under oh. shared services. Yeah. All right. So it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, <clears throat> learning and development. All right. Good, good. Uh, I sometimes see uh, vacancies for learning and development specialists and so on. So people do that. That means what? Do you, you provide training essentially or? Um, yeah, we do coordinating, um, trainings, um, also instructional designs, um, assessment, okay. portfolios, or, or anything to do with learning and development. Also a lot of project-based. Okay, wow. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, it's going to be hard work. <laughs> I, I do not believe in hard work. Mm -hmm. So if you're attending this course, guys, uh, <clears throat> if you find it hard, or you find it difficult, then I have failed, right? I should make it, you should feel that you want to attend the class. You should feel that you can manage the assignments well. Uh, the only uh, issue should be how to score in the paper. That's about it. Right? That's the most. Right? Other than that, it should be easy. So, Denisha, uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, what song would you like to request and for whom? <laughs> Is it the radio DJ? <laughs> I could not practice, uh, Khalifa. I could not practice. <laughs> I think, uh, Khalifa, my next job, uh, I work on in the radio, uh, RTM uh, or one of those private stations. Uh, I would love to, uh, but I don't have the voice for it, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. Selamat pagi, Malaysia and all. So let's go on to... Uh, guys, <clears throat> today I'm going to do only, let me see, uh, uh, three things after this. I'm going to go through the course plan with you. I'm going to go through the questions with you. And I'm going to go through just one area today very fast. Today's class is a little bit longer. I do apologize. Uh, usually my class is a little bit shorter, but today's the first class. And uh, some of you are new. So we need to do this bit of introduction, which took up some time. So right now, let's go to the first things you need to do. We need to do is just run through the course plan with you. Actually. I'm going to run through it a little bit quick, simply because uh, it's actually, um, how should I say, it's already up on your Europe's. Uh, I'm assuming everybody has access. Let me just share this screen with you guys. Share the screen. Zoom is quite good. It's very useful, easier to use than Google Meet because we, we usually use Google Meet. But Zoom is so much better, I must say. Okay, guys, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, now. Um, so, guys, if you look at the screen here, uh, this is what is known as the course outline. Right? It gives you a, an overview of the course. Okay, so let me try and make it a little bit bigger. There you go. So uh, this is already in your Eurox. Has everybody have access to Eurox? Anyone got no access to Eurox? 
everybody has that because if you don't have it uh, well it's, it's going to be tough uh, seriously tough you know because sometimes i have students after two weeks come and say sir only now i have access to urox that is not useful right <clears throat> so you need to already be on urox because the notes are already there right um so that's my name uh and that's my phone number. Please include my phone number in the uh, in the WhatsApp chat. Let's put my phone number in. Mm. You are not allowed. Uh, <laughs> you're not allowed to. Nobody's allowed to spam me, uh. Khalifa. You Khalifa is my class monitor. Nobody's allowed to spam me just because my number is there. Don't write to me <laughs> simply. <laughs> And especially don't write to me at 11 30 at night. Uh, this is a course synopsis, which means uh, it is uh, a summary of all the courses. You can read it because it's there for you. These are the learning outcomes which you're supposed to achieve, like most of you will not. Uh, but there you go. These are the program objectives, what we hope to achieve with this program. Okay, again, you can uh, read it, it's quite standard. Uh, these are the recommended reading materials, which it's here, but you don't really have to get it. Uh, but if you really want to get something, you can go to Melissa Bryan, who has a book on this Kindle book and so on, and you can uh, access. And there's a lot of information out there. Plus, we also will be providing you with quite a few reading materials to assist you. Teething strategy and all that, that's there. Cost requirements, right? Importance of uh, attendance, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you come. Hopefully you are listening. I called a few names, nobody's answering. I made a note of that. Uh, so you must uh, try to be involved, right? Because there's the participation marks for that. Now, this is an important part, which is the coursework. So you understand what uh, this course entails. And it's quite straightforward. You will have two assignments. First assignment, 25% marks. Assignment number two, 40%, that's it. The rest is attendance and participation, right? And then you have the final assessment. That makes up 100%. But I want to impress upon you one thing. Some of you may not realize it, but uh, if you attend every class, it doesn't mean that you will get the full five marks. It may not be so. Uh, in a sense that if you attend all the classes, you get one mark. If you um, participate, then you can get the the remaining four marks. So in other words, if you just switch on your, you just uh, click in your attendance, it's just worth one mark. So it's nothing much. So you're going to have to think about that. Uh, and hopefully we can get you to participate. So this is one, two, three, four. So it's just two assignments uh, and your final assessment. Okay. Uh, this is the study. Uh, hi, Jahiza. Morning. You're welcome. <laughs> This is your uh, study course plan. Uh, what are the uh, things that are involved here? I will not be following the things um, directly because I'm, I'll be working with you on your assignments, really. Uh, and then this is the competencies that you will gain. As I told you, your brain will grow and so your competencies will be increased. Um, and that's it. That's the course plan. So I'll stop sharing. This one is on Eurox. And... Um, as I said, the next thing we want to do is we want to look at the questions. And I think that's important before you start anything. And the questions, uh, let me just put that up. So you know what you need to know. Mm. Questions, where are they? Okay, so for assignment number one, test one. Can you see task one? Assignment outcomes and everything. It's 25% of the marks. This question is about, see, negotiation uh, is important for us to re remember that okay, uh, uh, negotiation is both substantive as well as it's, to a large extent, also emotional. Right now, it's emotional. That's the reality, okay? 
So uh, you may learn everything about negotiation, but you also got to understand emotions, right? Because we are all, we are all human beings. I hope all of you are. <laughs> there are no aliens in my class. So when you are that, there's the issue of emotions, anger, unhappiness, sadness. So in negotiation, these things count as well, right? So you find the assignment pedagogically will cover both areas, right? For you, it's just an assignment, but from a pedagogical point of view, there's a lot of depth in the understanding, meaning to say the first assignment will take into consideration things like perception, and cognition, that means cognition, basically what goes on inside your head, right? What an emotion, what goes on inside your heart, how you feel, anger, happiness, right? That one. And then the other one will be, the other assignment later you'll see, it's got to do with the, the technical almost aspects of the negotiation. So quite interesting, quite useful, and you will learn uh, most everything in that. And I tried my best to keep the assignments limited, right? If I'm not mistaken, your other, some some of, uh, sometimes you have a class where they have so many assignments and quiz and midterms and everything. Here, there's only two, right? You can thank me later. <laughs> uh, so, so that way you will actually enjoy it. Like, it won't be too difficult. Okay. Uh, so the question says perception, cognition, emotion, building blocks of social encounters. Yeah, certainly. It, there's a lot of uh, that thing going on, right? Uh, our biases, if you like. And in this assignment, you are expected to watch a video a video, and then you're supposed to examine and discuss the video, right? And on top of that, besides just asking you the question, I also give you some tips in the assignment on what you should look for, what you should discuss. So it's, when I give you a tip, these are some of the things. It's not all of the things. There are other things that you can discuss as well, provided you read your notes and attend the class. Okay, all right, so that's fine. And then, of course, you are to submit via Eurox 19 of May. Okay, again, for this assignment, as is usual, I try my best to incentivize you. Those who submit on time will get one extra mark. Okay, if you submit on time. If you submit late, of course, there's the usual uh, penalties and so on, right? And then some student will ask me, they'll ask me a question like, sir, if I submit one day earlier, I get one mark. If I submit 10 days earlier, can I get 10 marks? <laughs> Becky, are you there? Yes, sir. Becky, are you are, are you also thinking that? <laughs> I would I would be very happy if that's the situation, but then I know it's 10 days or so, it's still going to be one mark. <laughs> Good. See, Becky's got it right. Y'all please listen to Becky. I didn't even have to explain to her. She knows. It is, one mark is just an incentive for you la, to submit on time. Okay, guys. If you submit on time, at least. I'm sure in other classes, you don't even get that. Okay? So here you go. Uh, you may all clap later. <laughs> okay. So that's the thing, la, the, the video. Now, when you watch this video, and I'll show it to you shortly. When you watch this video, the analysis is on the video itself. You don't have to go watch the whole movie. No, no, no. We're not. Some students get the wrong idea. They think that by watching the whole movie, they'll understand more. No, I'm not interested. We're interested in that small little clip. That's just that clip. That's about it. All right. I will try and see if I can find it. I will show you the clip. Even, even I will show you. Uh, let me just, uh, I'm going to keep adjusting this thing. Where is it? Okay, I show you the clip uh, and then we'll discuss it quickly. Such a part Um You all watch this clip, but hopefully you can hear the sound. Can you all see the clip? Uh, can yes, sir. Still not clear, right? Can you see her? Yes, can sir. Can you? I, I'm going to press the button. Can you hear? 
Can you hear? Can you hear? Can't hear, right? Can. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Wait a second. Uh, okay, share sound. Okay. Now, sometimes the thing, the share sound thing automatically goes off. I'm not sure why. But it does. Uh, okay, just watch this. Ready. <clears throat> Ready, Bender. This is Rex Rex Raw, and you are the lovely Marilyn. Please, Miss Rex Ross. And you must be Miss Damasi. Please. Mom. Oh, no, the sound is, is getting stuck. Ready. <clears throat> Ready, Bender. This is Rex Rex Raw, and you are the lovely Marilyn. Please, Miss Rex Ross. And you must be Miss Damasi. Please, Miles. Sit, sit down. Oh, Freddie, I was sorry to hear about the Goldberger Award. Pastry? <laughs> we did very well. We did very well. Not to worry, Mrs. Rexroth. You're ably represented. I'm sure Freddie's just too modest to tell you he used to clerk for Clarence Thomas. Pastry, go and beg him. Don't, don't try to bait me, Miles. Now, if you have a proposal to make, let's hear it. Well, at this point, my client is still prepared to consider reconciliation. My client's ruled that out. My client is prepared to entertain an amicable dissolution of the marriage without prejudice. That's a fart in a stiff wind. My client proposes a 30-day cooling off period. My client feels sufficiently dispassionate. My client asks that you not initiate proceedings pending his setting certain affairs in order. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so goddamn funny? Please, let me handle this. All right. So much for the icebreakers. What are you after, Freddy? My client is prepared to settle for 50% of the marital assets. <coughs> why only 50, Freddy? Why not 100? While we're dreaming, why not 150? Are you familiar with Kirshner? Kirshner does not apply. Bring this to trial. We'll see if Kirshner applies. What's Kirshner? Please, let me handle this. Kirshner was in Kentucky. Kirshner was in Kentucky? Kirshner was in Kentucky. All right, Freddy, forget Kirshner. What's your bottom line? Primary residence, 30% of remaining assets. What are you, nuts? Have you forgotten Kirshner? Freddy, it's a negotiation. See you at the preliminary. Freddy, we're all friends here. It's a negotiation. <laughs> hey, uh, Freddy. Fine, we'll eat the pastry. I thought that went well. Right. <laughs> what was that about? Question. Surabita. What was that about? Sura. Ms. Uh, Sura is missing. Linda Leong, are you there? Hi, Linda, how are you? Sorry, Prof, at work, I can't really speak. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, oh, that was, uh, okay, fine. No, if you're at work, it's fine, work is important. Uh, Linda Leong, is, are you there? Yeah, you're okay. Yes, yes Prof. Can't hear you. In here now. Uh, it's very soft, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, no? yeah, it's very soft. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure about for the rest of you, but for me, I can I can hardly hear. It's like a whisper, false whisper. Oh. Uh... Maybe it's your mic. No worries. Uh, we'll try again another time. Tabeneswari. Tava, Tava, let's call it Tava. Yeah. Prof. Now, what was the video about? Huh? I think it is a um, discussion between two clients, maybe on a case um, to attain a negotiation, but which doesn't end up good. Maybe because of the percentage. Yeah, I, actually not maybe. It is because of the percentage requested yeah. by the opposite client. You've answered everything except the question. Uh, and what was it all about? What, what was is, it all? Uh, what was the purpose of that negotiation? Purpose. What? Huh? 
Huh? The case. You mean the case? What case is that? Is it? Yeah. Uh, divorce. Divorce. Perfect. Java, you did very well. That's exactly. You, you, I, th I thought you did a, a very good job. Thank you, Doc. Absolutely right. It's a divorce case, right? Not. And it was between who was the lawyer? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I say what? La... Becky, who was the lawyer? That's Becky. Right. Uh, not sure with the name, bro. <laughs> I don't know what to say, la. You you all don't watch movies, uh. What's the lawyer's Freddy, name? Freddie and Miles, bro. I know Freddie and Miles, but who was the actor, the lawyer? <laughs> oh, Josh Clooney, bro. Josh Clooney, Becky, still don't know. <laughs> it was Josh Clooney, cross. Uh, ah, Lavani. Actually, Lavani, I got really excited. No, now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lavania, don't tell me you're a Josh Clooney fan. Uh, not a single fan, but of course I watched his movie. <laughs> Nonsense, you are the fan, just admit it. She's trying to say like, no, 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 she's not. By the way, Lavania, I have news for you. I have actually met and spoken to George Clooney personally. Is he? So nice. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and I'm, I'm not kidding you guys. I've actually met him uh, in Hollywood. Right, um, it was uh, <laughs> I. He and he's such a nice guy. He's such a nice guy, um, and he's very. Uh, he knows Malaysia. That's the best part. So we were talking, and I said, "I'm from Malaysia." Oh, I know Malaysia. You may sound it may sound like a big deal, not a big deal, but actually it's a big deal because in the United States, if you ask anybody Malaysia, they are that now they have no idea where we are, <laughs> who we are. <laughs> but um, Josh Clooney knew. And uh, it was very, very pleasant and uh, very friendly. Um, and it wasn't me in a group, you know, it was me and him. Because um, I had just come back from Hollywood and uh, I was, uh, it was about, uh, about 10, 11 at night. And I went to the, uh, the cafe near where my hotel was uh, just to grab something to eat. Uh, and, uh, and he was there. <laughs> Josh Kuni was there. <laughs> in a burger cafe, Lavania. <laughs> and uh, so I, you know, the, the best part is, I didn't see him at first, but I heard the voice. I said, hey, hold on, there's a very distinct voice. And true enough, it was him. Right? So I had a chat with him, took a photo as well, uh, and everything. I was so, uh, so nice. And uh, we shook hands and everything. So the, the after the, the, the meeting, uh, because you never really get to meet a star in Hollywood, right? So then I called back Malaysia and I spoke to one of my colleagues. Her name is uh, Prof Leilani. Said, hey, Lei, guess what? Who I met just now. I said, I just had a chat with uh, um, Josh Clooney and we just shook hands. You know what she said? <laughs> Lavanya, you know what she said? Don't wash your hands. <laughs> So, Lavanya, you don't tell me uh, you're not a fan. Oh, I watched all these movies, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, Lavanya, I'll tell you one thing. Okay, yeah. He's, yes, bro. He's better looking. He's, he's smart. He's excellent. But one thing I can, I exceed, I'm slightly taller than him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're slightly, that means he's not that tall? He's not, Lavanya, he's not that tall. I also thought, you know, when you watch movies, huh? It's like Tom Cruise, you know. Tom Cruise looks like, you know, but ever actually, Tom Cruise is a very short guy. Even George Clooney is not that tall, and I'm not that tall myself. I'm not like a six footer or something. I'm like, I think my five ten maybe, and he's slightly shorter oh, than me. You cannot be five ten. I'm about five three. <laughs> Was that? I'm about five three. You cannot be five ten. <laughs> Who me? Yeah, that means he's shorter than that. Yeah, he's shorter than that. He's shorter than me. He's shorter than me. Maybe he's about five, eight and a half, maybe. I think that. Like, but basically, he was shorter than me, which, which surprised me as well. Uh, but that's not the issue, isn't it? He's such a such a very... Um, charismatic actor. Yeah, charismatic. Certainly, excellent voice, very talented. But more importantly, as a person, he's very humble and very nice to speak to. You know, quite different. So I'm, I was just, uh, yeah. So there you go. That's the assignment, right? Focus on the assignment, Lavenia. I expect you to not only focus on the. 
<laughs> so the rest of you, if you want to attend my class, you please watch movies. You don't watch movies, sorry. A lot of <laughs> explanation will be based on movies because movies get your imagination going. And I think that's always useful. Right, so we wasted a lot of time talking about other things, which is, which was important to Lavania, but nobody else, okay? So, so let's get back to work. Uh, what were we seeing? Ah, we were talking about the assignment, right? Assignment. Okay. So that was assignment number one, correct? Uh, so just focus on that clip and then go back to your notes. There's a lot of notes on uh, perception and cognition and everything. It's all in the notes, actually. So you just have to look at the notes and then you have to analyze the scene and to see who, what, what, what's happening with this sort of negotiation. Guys, what you need to understand is in a negotiation, uh, as you rightly described, a, a divorce negotiation is very emotional. Right? Now, people are very angry. People are very upset. People are very sad. Many things are going on. Right? And then the negotiation is going on. So uh, what, what is happening there? Uh, you need to analyze that. Uh, so you need to pick on each one and then discuss it uh, based on your understanding and your analysis and the notes. Okay? So that's all you need to do for that one. So that's assignment number one. Okay? Now let's look at assignment number two. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me just let me look for it. Mm -hmm. Assignment number two. Yeah. Okay, this is Simon number two. So we're going to take the mystery out of the whole thing. So essentially, can you see? It's uh, task two, individual assignment as well, and so on. And then it's 40% of the marks, right? Why? Because this one involves you preparing a negotiation strategy, right? And as we go along, I will be guiding you on this as well, so no worries. But essentially, this is what it involves, and you can start thinking about it. Uh, and this negotiation is a, more like a, a company-wide negotiation, the substance of it. Negotiation with government, negotiation with another company, negotiation with suppliers, purchasers, and so on and so on, right? And so you must come up with a negotiation plan right, for the organization, right, and so on. So we can read the rest of it. Uh, of course, there's a deadline as well. You need to meet that. And don't forget, guys, always in my class, there's always the word count. And the word count is no more than 3,000 words. So you've got to keep to the word count, right? Uh, do not exceed the word count. Uh, unfortunately, still there are students who can actually write to me and say that, oh, uh, the word count... Uh, Sir, it's 3,000, but I've written 3,050 words. You cannot do that. If you do that, your marks will be deducted. You can do that. I mean, you submit it, but you will be penalized for that. So you must follow the instructions strictly. Why? Because you are an MBA student. You're working in organization. You must follow instruction, isn't it? If your client asks you to supply two items, you supply three. Can or right, not? If your CEO asks you, oh, please go and do something, and do this and that, but you go and do something else, can cannot also. So in the MBA class, this part of the ability to follow instructions that will make you both a good employer, good employee, and a good business person, whatever you're doing, whatever you're specialized in. Okay, guys. So I think that that goes without saying, but I ne needed to say it because unfortunately in my other class, some students were still, you know, very, I would describe as clumsy and not following that, so that's not good. So that's the two assignment done, right? It's done. Uh, next, uh, we need to uh, we look at the, the just the first part of the um, your last bit for today, right? So we looked at the course outline, we looked at the question, we're just gonna look at some of the slides for the first part to give you an introduction to business negotiation, okay? Um, let me see if I can find that. Yeah. Oh, this one, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. 
like, there you go. Now, before we start, I should tell you that in negotiation, it's very important for you to read the notes and to attend the class. The reason why, the reason I mentioned this is because business negotiation is a little bit technical. There, that means there will be terms in the class that you use that you don't use normally. Right? Words, terms that relate to business negotiation right? and conflict management. So it's like, it's quite like that. So if you don't attend the class and you go and put some question on chat GPT to answer and all that, not going to work, right? Not going to be working. Talking about chat GPT, I always encourage students to use technology, no problem. But you do not abuse it, right? Just like if you use Google, it's the same thing. The information is there. Then you take it and you plonk it into your assignment, you have a problem, right? Recently, my last class, students did an exam, and a lot of it is AI-driven. Again, you will lose marks as a result of that. So I just want you to know that you can use technology, but use it to enhance your information, but you have to apply uh, what you have read, learned, or understood to the question in, uh, at hand, right? Otherwise, you will be wondering how come your marks are suffering. It'll be because of that, because Turnitin can check, and it will show the AI uh, percentage as well, as well as the plagiarism. So just be careful about that. I'm just trying to uh, impress upon you, especially in this subject, especially in this subject, because it's pretty technical, the words, okay? Um, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, no uh, so we go go to run a few slides here just to give you an idea of what, what we mean by negotiation, right? Negotiation is something that everyone does almost daily. Ah, why, why do we say that? Why do we say that? Did you know that uh, we are all negotiating all the time? All the time. Uh, in the sense that you are negotiating not only at your office, uh, with your suppliers, with your purchases, you're also negotiating with who? Your boss, isn't it? To get a promotion, to get a um, increment, right? In your evaluations, your yearly evaluations, right? And a lot of you are also negotiating uh, at home. You negotiate with who? With your, who do you negotiate with at home? My husband. <laughs> yes, that's right. Actually, that is wrong. Khalifa, she said her husband. She thought we don't know. Actually, no. She's not negotiating with her husband. She's telling him. You, when you tell somebody, it's not negotiating. That means they must do. <laughs> Bro, that's yes, so uh, <laughs> Because with my wife, it's not negotiation. She's telling me there's a difference. So we have to do. Right? So this is the thing. So you all think it's negotiating. It's not. It's not negotiating, right? So when we all say, I want to go out, you say, ah, you want to go, go lah. Is that negotiating? No. That means you don't go. You better sit your ass down and do your work. That is instruction, bro. <laughs> ah, it's my... <laughs> it's my... So Tawa is trying to bluff us. Oh, all, the, all the ladies here are trying to bluff us. Like, it's my... You know, you know, we negotiate with the... Nonsense is telling us supposed to be negotiation. Lah. The negotiation is only often happen with the kids. <laughs> ah, betul. that's right. Negotiation, and then uh, that one with the kids, we always win. We already know kita kan, uh, we got no experience. So the kid uh, is silent. The kid, uh, the kid doesn't know anything, <laughs> you know, and that is why when the kids grow a little bit older, when they are in the teens, they don't want to talk to us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they don't talk to us. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, anyway, guys, listen. Right? Let's stay away from reality. <laughs> Let's live in a make-believe world. At home also, you're supposed to negotiate right, and discuss <laughs> and then see what you can do, just like in the office. So it's two things going on. And in a sense, we do it all the time. We do it all the time, isn't it? Everything that you do is some kind of negotiation. And a lot of you with so much uh, working experience, I'm sure you, you know what we're talking about, right? Uh, so that's what the slide says. Uh, so, so the question is, why do we have to negotiate, right? We, we negotiate because we want something, right? 
if you don't uh, need something, why do you have to negotiate? Because negotiation is hard, right? There's a, when you use the word negotiate, it's almost like you may win, you may lose. This is thinking, right? So if possible, if you don't need to negotiate, you prefer. No need to negotiate. You prefer. That is why sometimes some of you, when you go shopping, uh, you prefer to go to places where the harga, the pricing is written there already. No need to negotiate, right? I'm one of those people. I just love that because uh, because if I negotiate, especially in the Pasar Malam and all, I'll be a loser. <laughs> I remember, I must tell the story because I go. To, I went to Vietnam. Vietnam, uh, I went for a conference. Uh, so they have these big marketplaces. I don't know, I'm sure some of you have been to, I think it was in Hanoi. I was in Hanoi. And they say everything is cheap and they've got all this uh, so-called branded goods, <laughs> which are very cheap. <laughs> so uh, I negotiate for some T-shirts or something. And uh, I think, like example, they said 50 ringgit. I said, no, no, I want it for 25 ringgit. Immediately, the lady said, okay. And she gave it to me. <laughs> so I said, wow, that's not bad. 50 ringgit, I asked for 25. She said, okay. But when I went back to my hotel, I realized... Maybe uh, <laughs> I got taken for a ride. That means it actually can be cheaper. <laughs> Do you feel that way? I'm sure some of you feel that way, isn't it? Sometimes you go and negotiate something and uh, the person who's selling you immediately says, okay. Ah, Tawa, what do you think? Pasa malam. Tawa, do you, uh, do you negotiate at the Pasa malam? Yes, sometimes, doctor. Sometimes, but normal, normally we don't because the price, even though if we negotiate, it doesn't work actually. The sellers are more strict with their price nowadays. Oh, yes. Uh, and they're also very smart. See, the thing is, you try to be smarter than the Pasa Malam person. You think like you're smart because you, you know, your mother, your auntie told you how to negotiate everything. Then you go there. You think. But actually, the Pasa Malam person, you. Maybe you go to Pasar Malam, I don't know, in a year, two, three times, maybe like, something like that. But the Pasar Malam lady or man is dealing with people every day. Do you think they are, they are better at bargaining than you? Of course, they are better than you, for sure. Right? So, so later, we'll discuss more about this one, but, uh, and then you will see what it means. But basically, uh, it's because you are negotiating, because you need to divide something, share something, right? get something where you need to get somebody's permission. For example. So you start to negotiate. Right? Sometimes there's a problem and you need to resolve that. Perhaps it's that as well. Then you've got... So the point to remember is the Pasa Malam one is actually not negotiation. It's bargaining. Right? Bargaining is not negotiation. Negotiation is a discussion. Right? Bargaining has this connotation that it's win or lose. Right, and win or lose. Maybe I win, maybe you win, or, or one of us will lose. Okay, negotiation is a little bit more challenging, right? Because you're trying to consider many different things, right? And it's a little bit more, um, I, would, I would say, complex, lah. Okay, um, when you're trying to uh, find um, a win-win situation, right? So when you deal, for example, at home, if you deal with your wife or your husband, that's a negotiation. Why? Because you have to take many things into consideration. You don't want them to be unhappy. right? So you're trying to see how it can work. In the organization, when you're dealing with a supplier, you know you need the supplier. But at the same time, you need to have a good price. You need to have good terms of payment, good terms of delivery, whatever. right? So you are negotiating. So in other words, you don't want to win all the time. You're prepared to lose some things and gain some things. That's a negotiation. Well, if you pass or somewhere, it's straightforward, just a matter of price, and you don't care about the person, you just, that's called bargaining. Right? It's different. It's quite different. Right? It's, it's not just the spelling. It's not more than that. Uh, character, there's an interdependence you'll find right, in negotiation, interdependence. The reason why I negotiate with you is because I need... I need your okay, right? I need your okay, interdependence. I depend on you to supply me something, to provide something. That is why we are negotiating, right? And as a result of that, 
sometimes you will have the issue of conflict. Right? And because there's also the danger of conflict, this is why you, you negotiate. Firstly, I need to ask you something. I need that. Right? At the same time, I cannot just force my way because then that will cause a conflict. Right? As much as you might need me, I need you as well. So we negotiate. So this is what they mean. Okay. So we need to understand those that basic. Precept, if you like, so the, the the precursor to to the discussion, right? Uh, of course, there are two or more parties, um, and usually you negotiate or you bother to sit down because you think you can get what you want, and it'll be you will put you in a better position. Okay, if you think that if I negotiate, also nothing will happen, uh, no change, nothing. What happened? You won't negotiate. Right, which is the case always with who? With employees, isn't it? You notice employees, you work in an organization. How many of you actually go and negotiate with the boss? No, isn't it? Ah, Tawa, what do you think? Nothing will happen. Isn't that right? Because you 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 say that the organization is very large, they have many employees. You are one employee. Would you go and negotiate with the boss? Chances are you won't. You just say, ah, I don't care. Lah. Nothing will happen. Lah. Boss always promises uh, nothing will happen. Lah. You know? Or boss doesn't even want to speak to me. Doesn't even want to negotiate. Right? Or sometimes we say, oh, the boss, uh, my superior, uh, he will listen to me, but he got no power. He got no authority. He cannot make changes. Isn't it? So what do you do? You don't negotiate. Lah. You just keep quiet. Right? So what, what's, what are you doing when you do that? What's the term? It's called quiet quitting, isn't it? Do you know the term quiet quitting? Can I write something somewhere? Hmm. Have you heard the term quiet quitting, guys? Quiet quitting. Where's the annotation? Uh, I, like, I use this. Uh, this is a bit slow, but I'll try. Yeah, not, not doing anything more than just your work. Yeah, you know... You know why? Because Q, you all are going to be very impressed with my writing. I just warn you first. I know you all be thinking, sir, why is your writing so good? Quiet quitting. Q I think that's how it's spelled. Have you all heard this word before? Quiet quitting. That means you, 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 because you know, even if you, uh, no point, uh, no point asking. Right? The impression that you get is that nothing will happen. So what do you do? You have to put up with it. So you're not happy. So what do you do? You can't, you don't have another job, but you're, you're stuck because you need the salary, you need the, whatever you're getting paid. So you just, Carry on working uh, nine to five, just be there, do the bare minimum and try to walk away. Huh? Surabita, is that what you're doing now? Sura. No. <laughs> because you're working. I right? think it depends on the culture, right? I mean, on, the cu on the culture of the organization. Culture. Yeah. If yeah, you see things doable, workable, movable, you would try. You and try. I think the younger generation are more keeping the status quo type. They at least dare. Mm, true. So, of course, they're good organizations as well. I mean, not say good, but organization that uh, would take uh, your your concerns, you know. For example, you've been working a long time, you haven't been promoted, you feel they're not happy and they listen to you. Um, and then some organizations will need you to blackmail them or um, um, twist them. Say, look, I've been working here for three years, I haven't got a promotion, this, 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 and I've got another job. So what do you what do you want to, what do you want to do? <laughs> Are you going to promote me or not? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully it's that. But I I feel uh, based on what I've spoken to a lot of people, uh, a lot of times um, uh, it's futile. You know, 
So they, they don't they don't go and ask or discuss the thing with the boss so much and just live with it. I don't know. So that's something to think about. Um doesn't the word go away. Where's my eraser? I will now erase it. Yeah, negotiation, right? Um, so ma negotiation involves uh, the tangibles and the intangibles, right? Tangibles, you know, you're negotiating for a better price. You're measuring for better terms of the agreement or the contract. That makes a lot of sense. Everybody like. But they're also the intangibles. Sometimes some people, uh, when they negotiate, it's a matter of face, face value, image. They don't want to lose, right? Uh, they, they, maybe they're very proud organization, a very big organization. They must always look like they're winning. So there are psychological motivations. I think you can you can imagine you know, psychological aspects. So that is why you find that when we study negotiation, it cannot be just the technical terms. We must also understand the people right, and where they come from and what they want. Okay. So that that would, I'm sure for a lot of you, you know that that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, so essentially, there's that big issue of interdependence. Because negotiation is hard. Why must I negotiate? If I negotiate with you, that means I have to give you something as well. Because negotiation is a two-way thing right now. But if I, if I have all the resources, if I have all the opportunities, well, I don't negotiate with you. Lah. I just do it myself. Huh. Always the case, isn't it? So you find that uh, sometimes very large organizations are put in a better position because they get options, there are many options, okay? If you don't have options, then you're forced to negotiate. So negotiation is not so simple. So a lot of people think that, oh, negotiate, negotiate. But actually, you prefer not to negotiate if you can help it. And you'll see that. Um, uh, yeah, interdependence is a big issue, right? You have different goals, so that's why you negotiate, right? What the supplier wants and what you want different, right? So uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, sometimes the negotiation is a zero-sum game where you go in with the mindset that, oh, I negotiate, I must win. Actually, that's not the right way to negotiate. It's wrong, actually. You can't even call it a negotiation, right? So you, let's say um, <clears throat> if uh, uh, one of you say that, oh, I want to go and uh, buy a house. Okay. So Tawa says she wants to go and buy a house. Uh, the house costs $700,000. But Tawa said, no, no. You know, uh, I want it for cheaper. I want it for 600000 Then the guy who wants to sell the house say, okay, Tawa, Tawa, you buy the house for seven. Uh, you, the house costs seven hundred. You are willing to pay six hundred, okay? Hey, Pa. You are willing to pay six hundred. The house costs seven hundred. But now, when you go and see them, they say, "Okay, fine." We, they say we cannot sell for six hundred. You cannot pay seven hundred. Let's agree on six hundred and fifty. Is that okay? Sounds good. Yeah. So you you're right because actually you only want to spend six hundred, but now he's asking for six fifty. Would you say okay? Um, I will try to go first. Then I can get. Hello, hello. Already nego already la. Now six fifty. <laughs> he wanted seven hundred. He's not getting seven hundred. He's getting six fifty. You wanted six fifty six hundred. You're not getting it. You give. So you're meeting at six fifty six hundred fifty. Would you go ahead with that? I think yes. So if Tawa takes the decision to go ahead, in the sense that whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But the point is this. She actually wants to buy a house. And she saw this house. She likes the house. So if she says 650, her time is not wasted and she's got the house. And the guy, if he doesn't, if he goes at 650, but at least he sold the house because that's what he wants to do. So now she's got the house and he's got the money. Of course, Tawa can take a different approach. Tava said, no, no, 600 or nothing. Can. 
they all walk away, but she won't have the house, which is what she wanted, isn't it? So this is the point we're trying to make. It's easy to say that, oh, I, for me, it's a zero-sum game. Zero-sum game means it's my way or the highway. It's my way or the highway. If you don't give me 600, I'm going to walk away. Yes, you can walk away, surely. But do you actually benefit? Not really. Because you didn't get what you wanted. That's what we're trying to say. So that's a zero-sum game. So ideally, it should be something integrative. Integrative means, like what Tawa said just now. She said, oh, if we agree on 650, chances are I'll take the house. This is integrative. Yeah, he's giving up 50, I'm giving up 50. I think it's fair. Yeah, it's an integrative, so uh, mutual dependence. Okay. So the other thing to remember is whether or not Tawa will agree it depends on, how should I say, the dependence on her her requirements, her alternatives. Now, this is the important part. This is the important part of negotiation. Whether or not Tava agrees, it depends on her alternatives. Now, what does that mean? Now, going back to the same example, now Tawa goes to this Taman to buy the house. So Tawa, you want to buy this house, you know why? Because your mother stays there. Okay. Your mother stays there. So you want to stay by that house in that small taman because you want to stay near your mother. Yeah, so I have a need. That's to right, that's house. right. But why? the reason why you want to stay with your mother, I'm not sure. Maybe you want your mother to look after your kids. <laughs> are you are you married to your kids? <laughs> yes, Prof. Yes, I have. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Uh, one. One. Uh, so maybe Tawa says, uh, I want to buy the house in that area. Uh, and she told the husband, not that she told the husband, she didn't ask him. She said, look, we're buying there eh, because my mother stays there. <laughs> stay, stay there. Then now she has to negotiate with the seller. But here's the problem. So Tawa wants to stay there because her mother is there. But the, the problem in that small taman, only one house for sale. The other house is all occupied. No one's for sale. Only one house, and this guy is selling it. And her mother stays just a few doors away. So now we find that Tawa's alternatives are limited, isn't it? Right? Because if you stay somewhere else, it's very far. Traffic jam, blah, blah, and everything. So when Tawa, Tawa now when you negotiate with a guy, and he says, no, I cannot reduce. <laughs> 700 is 700. Then how, what will you do, Tawa? I'll negotiate with him. Cannot. He, said, cannot. he said cannot. He just told you, you want 600. He said 700. You came and negotiate. You like the place and it's near your mother's house. And it's 700. So how now? If there is no alternatives, like no other house available, then I'll just agree. Ah, you see? this is So Tawa's response is that because she has no alternatives. So guys, in a negotiation, it's about the alternatives. Do you have an alternative? So that's where we come to this key word called BATNA, B-A-T-N-A. -A, best alternative to a negotiated agreement. You're going to have to learn this word. And that's what I mean by technical. You need to use this word when you're this, in your answer. And to understand more about this word, I've attached an article in Eurox. Please go and have a look. Read that article and understand it very well. It's a Harvard, Harvard negotiation article, right? So it's up to you to read that. But basically, it's an alternative. It's a discussion of alternatives. So you see just now, if Tawa had alternatives, she can do many different things. Let's say if there are two or three houses in the same Taman, then Tawa says, okay, never mind. Hold on. I'll go and check. She's going to negotiate with other people. Right? I'm trying to get the best deal. But there's only one house. Her alternatives are limited because her mother stays and she has no choice. And just now you heard she's willing to pay. This is usually the case. So when you don't have alternatives, your negotiation power goes down. So understanding the alternatives, which means knowledge, having knowledge will put you in that position. Knowledge is important in negotiation. Right? If your knowledge is limited. So if Tawa goes to this guy and negotiates about the house, the guy says 700, I won't reduce. But Tawa didn't bother to do her background work. She didn't go and check. 
whether there are other houses for sale in the same time. She didn't check. So now she feels that she's stuck. Right? Is she really stuck? No. She, if she had checked, she would know. If she checked, she'd say, okay, fine. If you don't want to reduce, fine, I'll go and look at her one. So you see, on the other hand, if she was just looking for any house within near KL, because she says near her workplace, then she has many chances. Right now. So the person who's selling the house, if, they, if the uh, uh, supply exceeds demand, uh, he will have to uh, maybe go down on his pricing. He may even have to. Tawa will then turn around and say, look, it's 600 or nothing. If not, I'll walk away because so many apartments or houses out there. Uh, then maybe the guy may say, okay, fine, I'll give it to you at 600. He might even give you a Tawa, he might even give you at 580. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes or not? Yes or not? Uh, so, this is how we understand it, guys. Very simple, is, but it's very powerful uh, information. It's called BATNA. So I need you to know, to go and read the article on BATNA so you have a better understanding of what that means, right? Uh, and you need to use that in your, uh, how should I say, in your answer. And, uh, oops, it's jumped. Right, uh, so, so there's some other points here. Mutual adjustment, right? Uh, people will people may think they want something, but in the negotiation, they may change, right? They may adjust. Sometimes they go down the price. Sometimes uh, if you're dealing with a supplier uh, or a purchaser, they have different terms, right? Depending on the product, depending on, on the service, depending on the alternatives. The same thing applies in the example I gave you about buying the house, same thing applies even in organizations, right? Does the organization have an alternative, right? And how can you adjust? The only difference is in an organization, it's a little bit more formal. Formal in the sense that when you negotiate, you maybe you don't own the company. So Tawa is working there. She doesn't own the company. She's a negotiator. She's negotiating on behalf of the company. There's only certain things that she can do. She cannot just simply do anything that she wants. Right, and that thing comes maybe from the chairman or from the board of directors. Say, look, you must negotiate this way, this way, this way. Right, just like in Malaysia, we negotiate to buy six ships. <laughs> remember the case? Do you all remember the case? Now, y'all, y'all, huh? Sharizal, Ismail, Ismail, maybe knows. Yes, I'm here, bro. Ah, Ismail, remember the case of uh, in Malaysia, we were supposed to buy the six uh, warships or something. Six warships? I yeah. Uh, I just know about the submarine. Uh, no, the submarine is one that went a long time ago, but recently also. Oh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Ah, six warships. I think they only received one. <laughs> <laughs> so, my point is, Negotiations can go on between governments or government and private contractors. There are many types of negotiation. So negotiating properly is very important. So if you negotiate properly, you're not worried whether they, whether they supply or not supply. You're not worried because in your terms of your contract is there. Right? Yes. Uh, so, for example, a lot of times like Air Asia or even MAS, they buy planes from Boeing, for example. The terms are there. You don't supply on time, you can, you will pay the penalty, and it's very high. Definitely. Right? At the same time, if they supply the plane to Malaysia and uh, to MAS or Air Asia, Malindo, if they don't take, there is a penalty as well. Always, right? So, this is the point we're trying to make, right? So, in a negotiation, in a formal negotiation, company wide. It's a, a little bit more formal. There are contracts, there are lawyers. Uh, there yes. Is, even though you're negotiating, but it's not your company. So you have to follow certain guidelines. Uh, that's the difference. If you're buying a house on your own, you decide. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe not you, lies. My, your wife decides. <laughs> 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 okay, so my point is, uh, you, it, there's a little bit more flexibility. It's a bit informal. Just, just, just to appreciate the the, the differences, like, you know, guys. So this is what we're saying. Uh, and then how much concession you can make. Also, it depends on that. If you are negotiating for yourself, you can decide. 
if you negotiate for the company, the company must decide. They will set it up, even though you may be the negotiator. And also in a company, let's say Ismail is negotiating for the company. It may be not, he's not the only person. There could be a team. There could be three or four people. The lawyers could be involved as well. The finance people could be involved as well. So uh, depending on the size of the of the matter, the importance, so the other considerations. So just think about that as well, Lawrence. Uh, of course, you when you <laughs> when you negotiate, there's always the dilemma, right? Uh, in the sense that you might have information. Information is power at the end of the day in negotiation, right? If you have information, sometimes you want to buy it. Somebody wants to buy a piece of land, and they know that the government is going to build something, right? Or the local council is going to build something that can enhance the value of the land, but the person who's selling the land may not know. So you don't share that information. So the question: Are you being dishonest? This is the problem. It's a, it's a dilemma of honesty. Should you tell them? If you tell them, then the price goes up. It's always the case, right? That is why uh, uh, Bursa and all that, they have very strict rules, right, about information, right? And, and people taking advantage. They call it insider trading and so on, right? That happens. Um, then the dilemma of trust. If you, on the other hand, are dealing with somebody and suddenly everybody wants to buy your piece of land, you better check because how come? And why, right? Because there's something that maybe you don't know, right? So because uh, people may not tell you everything in negotiation, they try to hide their cards, meaning they don't tell you everything, right? Uh, it's um, it's like playing poker. A game of poker is a game of cards where you don't tell. It's about bluff, keeping quiet about something, not showing off something. So negotiation is a lot like that, right? Uh, so this is the thing to think about. Um, yeah, claiming value and creating value. So sometimes in negotiation, uh, you try to make it look bad. I was giving you the example of Tava wanting to buy the house. So the person who's selling the house will always try to say, oh, you know, I just changed the roof. I just changed the roof. So it's a new roof. Or they say the structure is very good. Or they say something like, you know, whatever to 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 renovated house maybe yeah they will tell you it's renovated but what they don't tell you is the contractor was lousy and still leaking <laughs> yes or not yes professor ah, they won't tell you everything so this is the problem but at the same time they are trying to say that hey look this is more valuable this is the value of it right? it's not just this it's just that it's just that they're trying to increase the value and make it look better right uh somebody is selling you something say, oh this thing is fantastic it'll last forever Right now. Uh, is it true? Uh, or is he just trying to uh, enhance the value of the thing and improve his negotiation or her negotiation? So there's something that we have to think about, right? Um, so it's up to you to know, to recognize, and to see whether you can see through it. That's why I've said uh, knowledge is power. That's why you find that in B2B negotiation, normally it's a lot more challenging as opposed to negotiating with individuals. In B2B, let's say if Ismail's company wants to buy chemicals from, uh, just now uh, one of our students wants to buy chemicals, but Ismail's company has been planning for the last 20 to 25 years. He knows all about chemicals. He knows all the specifications, the technical specifications, everything. He knows what other people are selling because they've been around for so long. Hard. Now, that is why just now she said it's a commodity. Because what is the value? The only thing is for her to form a relationship, uh, you know, and offer a better price, right? But if you take a better price, then you are taking a hit on your profits. So this is a challenge, okay? Uh, so this is something that uh, we want to think about as well, right? Uh, again, uh, sometimes maybe you are negotiating with somebody who's totally new. If you're negotiating with somebody who's totally new, you find that uh, you need to discover a little bit about them. That is why you find that if you're the first time you're meeting somebody in a negotiation, and I've been in many of these, where you sit down in the in the boardroom, you sit here, they sit there, you know, and uh, you you start off not immediately negotiating, isn't it? You start talking about other things, about commonalities. Are we from the same kampong? Right? Do we like uh, golf? Right? We talk about the weather. <laughs> yes, no. We talk about the area. How's this area? How's the food? How this... Why? Why do you do that? Why do you have small talk? It is to gauge 
the other person is he a friendly guy is the team friendly are they happy to share are they smiling you're taking all that in isn't it right and it'll set the tone for your negotiation right so when you come in and you're negotiating with them they all walk in and they don't smile they don't want to have a talk when you ask them about something they say ah yes one word they're not giving you sentences it tells you something isn't it so you can't like no so it sets the tone again right and so you have to then think why how come and uh, what approach are they going to take right so these are things to think about uh, and it takes a bit of experience also uh, in these sort of things right uh, and so on. Uh, of course there can be conflict as a result of a sharp disagreement so people don't not happy they might want to walk away right like i said just now walking away may seem easy but it's not really the best thing because you don't get what you want and worse still if that's the only supplier then you're stuck right so you need to have a full understanding of your alternatives before you do something like that right? now conflict can be intra-psychic conflict as well right conflict can come in within yourself right you want ice cream but you're worried about your weight <laughs> <laughs> Tawa, do you have this problem? Huh? People, you, when you eat something, but you're worried about your weight. A lot, sir, a lot. <laughs> hey, Tawa, don't worry, me too. You know, because uh, as some of you may know, I love to run. And I try to run every day, literally. And I, I take part in races. Uh, so we train for that. So one of the key things is to keep our weight manageable. It's quite hard. Sometimes, it, you know, Tawa, it feels like we, I take one step forward, I take two steps back. <laughs> you call that self reward. <laughs> but it's a That's universal not... problem. It's... it's a universal problem. Uh, Shama, you... Tawala, not, 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 Shama, not everybody. Was it Shamla who was speaking to you just now? I can't. Yes, yes, it's me. Uh, so, Shamla, it's not a universal problem, no. La. Some of my cousins, uh, it's not a problem. They just eat whatever they want. They weigh three hundred kilos. They're not gifted. They're three hundred kilos and overweight. <laughs> wow. So they don't care. But of course, you have a. You know. You know. You, know, you take your weight. Uh, I don't know about you, lah. But like me, in my case, I try to hit a certain weight, you know, and then I'm coming close to it. So I'm quite happy. But the next two days when I take the weight, I've gone back. <laughs> we we <are> again. <laughs> it's it's quite hard. Um, but I I, I read somewhere Shamla that uh, actually, uh, if you want to lose weight, uh, you see, even though I you you you're probably wondering, hey, but how come I run every day? I run about ten k, you know, and why do I why do I worry about weight? Because I exercise. No no no, guys, here's the learning free of charge. Exercise doesn't really help you to lose weight so much. It helps you in many other ways, for sure. It's important. But it's the food. It's the food. Controlling the food. <laughs> exactly, Prof. <laughs> I'm from a medical line. So, yeah. And one oh. more thing for females, uh, it's very difficult because we have hormones. So, yeah, that, yeah, yeah the those... first 20 minutes of cardio will uh, enhance the. Uh, Cardio for, and also for for the hormones, um, and about twenty minutes will assist to lose weight. Yeah, and if yeah. we don't control our food, yeah, it's going to be very yeah. difficult. You know, I and sometimes I just to make myself feel better. You know what I do, Shamla? Evening, I run in the evenings and um, just mornings I'm a bit busy, so I I, I run uh, say about five ten. So I run and quite long in about one hour plus seven. I come back. Then uh, I take a shower. Then I, I weigh myself. Then oh, I'm very happy. You know why? I always weigh at least one kilo less because I swear. The <laughs> best time it? for you to weigh is early in the morning. Correct, but I don't like that, Shamla. I just don't like that because I'm always heavier. <laughs> I'm heavier. Yeah, it's horrible. So it's quite tough. It's quite a challenge, uh, and especially we as runners. It makes a big difference. If you're running 10K for one hour, you are carrying that extra, 
even two kilos or one kilo extra, every step is a lot, you know. Uh, it affects your speed. And so, I don't know, I'm sure many of you who are who are doing that, you may know. Uh, but you know something, uh, uh, Shamala, you know, <laughs> my wife, by the way, my wife is uh, does uh, training for fitness or uh, uh, for a lot of uh, uh, ladies and those who are middle-aged and older. And uh, a lot of them uh, come in and, and so they uh, one of them, uh, Shamala, is one of the guys is 91 years old. Can you imagine? So oh. good. Uh. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh. It's such he must be a very fit person. He, no, he's not. He's not. He, he's 91 years old. He He's a bit slow, uh, but he joins in in all the sessions. Uh, he joins in all the sessions, but he does it slower a little bit. But he's 91 years old. Uh, it's, it's truly, truly um, quite amazing. I'd love but, to uh, hear that he, even though he's 91 and he's still active. Still active. Uh, really, yeah. really fantastic. It just shows that it's an inspiration to all of us that, you know, uh, you know, and, and especially now, they don't talk about health span. They talk about, uh, they don't talk about lifespan. They talk about health span, isn't it? It's yeah. not how long you would live. It's about how healthy you will be. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, important. Um, my staff, like, very tough. Uh, especially for us, and then because uh, uh, I love the sweet stuff, uh, though I've cut down a lot, uh, <laughs> I love eating. <laughs> so so uh, we try interpersonal conflict. I'm always conflicted. Should I buy the cake or should I not? Uh, uh, and then there's also conflict between individuals, right? Bosses, your boss, and you conflict your staff and you. Right, uh, your your colleagues. There's conflict as well. These things can happen, uh, and that's the that's the other reality. Um, the other point is uh, group within groups. Right, there can be conflicts as well between families. Uh, there can be conflicts as well. Uh, <laughs> usually, <laughs> Shamla, you know, Shamla, the major conflict time is for families is when uh, is during weddings. Oh no. During weddings, and always some somebody gets un unhappy. I don't know if you've experienced that. Of uh, course. So if we can see so many dramas there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shamla, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. It's so horrible. Like, it's just, just so horrible. And uh, it happens everywhere because somebody, I mean, just mentioned this because somebody was complaining to us like, the other day about their, their daughter got married and all the issues. <laughs> it's hard. It's kind of sad. I have a, well, I'm just saying that conflict will happen. So hopefully with this uh, next or the next four or five weeks, guys, um, and trust me, guys, this learning on negotiation, uh, I tell you, will help you. will really help you. Uh, you will gain something. And I've included some really amazing videos by uh, this uh, lady professor. I think she's from Stanford. You must watch it. I've included that as well. So you're learning not just what we are learning from notes from me, from each other, but I put you some um, really awesome uh, negotiation approaches and she's really good. And the way she talks and the way she explains it, uh, <clears throat> and Shamla, you know, in her case, <laughs> she'll talk about one story where she walks to the shop and she sees a pair of shoes, <laughs> beautiful. She loves it. She said that the, sh the shoes are screaming at me. She wants to buy the shoe, but it's very expensive. So how does she negotiate with her when Kai was selling the shoes? <laughs> really good. Uh, do, do take a look at that. And I think uh, for a lot of you, uh, it'll resonate with you, uh, you or you can identify with it. Right? So uh, conflict uh, within ourselves, uh, within family, within uh, groups, within company, everywhere, all the time, right? Uh, the dysfunction of conflict, right? Um, uh, the, the, sometimes they always understand that I must win or you must lose. Sometimes it doesn't have to be that. It can be, it can be mutual, mutually advancing. Right? Uh, uh, you have a conflict, then you stop communicating. So sometimes it can be bad, but it, continuous com communication can actually help. Right? Though it's hard. Uh, blurred issues. Issues are not clear. Sometimes even in official. Don't talk about personal negotiation. No. Official negotiation, you misunderstand what the other party wants. 
what are the concern of the other party. So later you will see in future lessons of how you should ask the question and understand the issues clearly, right? And that can help you. Rigid commitments, being so rigid, not willing to be flexible. Just saw Tawa's case, because her mother is staying there, she was willing to be flexible. And it's important, isn't it, to get what she wants. Uh, and sometimes uh, the similarities are there. You're, the goal is to magnify the similarities, see what the commonalities are, rather than just to say, oh, we cannot agree. But what are the things that we can agree on? Can we build on that? Right? And so on. And then also to manage the conflict escalation. Just now you saw in the negotiation in uh, George Clooney and was that Zita Jones, right? Catherine Zita Jones, and between the lawyers. And you notice how the conflict, instead of settling, they walk away. And the other lawyer walked away because George Clooney was really irritated by, by them and irritated the guy as well. And, and they had to walk away. So the conflict was what's happening was a, what was happening to the conflict. He started off and it was escalating. All right. So that is something that you can discuss as well. All right, so that's good. Um, uh, conflict is good. The, the benefits of conflict is that, uh, in a sense that it makes you more keen, right? it makes you think. Right? It's gonna, if you're going to go in for a difficult negotiation, you start to think, prepare, right? And it enhances, right? it takes you to a different level because you're planning for it. So this is the thing. So a lot of times, many of us go and buy something. Uh, there's no planning, right? <laughs> and the big, biggest problem is my wife. I always go in the, in the negotiation. I say, oh, you better keep quiet. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> she sees something, she likes it. Oh, I, this is so good. <laughs> she says it's good. And that makes it hard for me to negotiate. So sometimes we go and buy an apartment or a house. You know, and if she likes something, she says she likes it. So I always say, don't say that. You know, I know we like it. I know it's what we want, but don't say it. <laughs> Let me negotiate. <laughs> me, on the other hand, I'm like, I'm going to buy something. I'm busy pointing out all the things that are wrong. I never point out anything that's correct. Right. So, uh, so Tawa, when you go and buy something, uh, who's the better negotiator, you or your husband? Um, I think me. You are not bad, lah. My wife is the worst negotiator. The worst. <laughs> she cannot. She likes something. She just say, "Oh, this is so nice. This is so beautiful." And I'm like, "What the heck? You just said that. I'm stuck now." <laughs> so, guys and girls, in your family, you decide whether you're the good negotiator or your husband, right? And if you if you if you find that your husband is a lousy negotiator, don't bring him along. <laughs> Jangan bawa. Because if you bring him along, he will go and spoil your negotiation. <laughs> right? Um, in other words, when you negotiate, you must be able to put on a poker face. Poker face means what you know. Cannot see the the expression in your face. Why not? Whether you're happy or sad. Keep a straight face. No change. <laughs> can you do that? Uh, you must be able to do that. If not, uh, people can size you up like, very quickly. It's very dangerous. Uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, so, well, uh, in negotiation, um, you you there are many, uh, if you like, outcomes, right? For example, you have yielding, inaction, compromising, problem solving, and contending, right? One is concerned about your own outcomes, concerned about other people's outcomes, okay? So, for example, when I negotiate with my wife, right, I'm always yielding. <laughs> I'm always yielding, okay, fine. Why? Because, okay, I have a family, children, or we just yield, it's no big deal. But when you negotiate uh, with uh, maybe somebody else, right? Maybe your uh, own brother or sister, maybe you're contending. Right? They don't want to give in. <laughs> Sometimes inaction, you don't do anything at all. So there's inaction. Other times, 
you are trying to compromise, right? That can happen as well. It means to say, hey, let's compromise something, right? But ideally, sometimes you want to solve the problem. That means you want to find out what's the issue. Or you're negotiating, then you say, hey, is that what you want? Let me try and see how I can help you. Let's discuss together, solve your problem, right? Or solve my problem, right? And then we can uh, move on. So sometimes uh, there can be many uh, different outcomes as you can well imagine, both in terms of uh, personal negotiation, in terms of your organization as well. So these are explanations here. You can just read it as you go along. Okay, guys. Right. So that I put up a video here as well, uh, in the sense that it talks about dirty tricks. Uh, if you want, you can have a look at that. Because some people uh, may try some unfair methods of negotiation. It can happen out there as well. Right. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but there's a video on that and you can check that out as well. So I won't go into that, but you can easily see that. So that's that. So that's the um, basic uh, outline of what we're going to be discussing. We're going to look at some of those points in greater detail in the coming weeks. Um, so uh, we've done the course plan, we've done the questions, guys, and now we've done the introduction. The introduction I've already mentioned to you, the key important thing is BATNA, right? Understanding what BATNA is, I've given you the article. I've given you a lot of videos. In fact, all the notes are already up there. If some of you want to start doing it early on, by all means, go ahead and do it. But as we go along over the next few weeks, we will also be discussing those points. Uh, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Anybody at all? If you're still around, Poganeswaran. Uh, I couldn't read the whole name. Poges, are you there? How to know how to call people? Felicia, oh, there's a picture there. Felicia, are you there? Are you in class? <laughs> yep. Can you hear me, Professor? <laughs> how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good too. You would know that. Are you? Did you just join us or just? No, no, no. I've been following. Thank you for uh, sharing your stories and also for just uh, running us through everything. Very interesting class. Good, good. Thank you. Thanks. I hope uh, do do join us. Like I told you guys before, the class is um, this lesson is a bit technical. There will be key words. Even if you look in the question, uh, in the question, I'm giving some tips on how to do it. Uh, even for uh, assignment number two, I will also give you some guide as we go along, okay? But if you can do it on your own, try. Try, and then you compare with what I'm suggesting to you, and then you can uh, get better learning as a result, right? Uh, so, uh, good uh, to see you. Manga, sorry, I can't see that word. Mangala Nayagi, are you there? Hi, Prof. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> Yeah, and doing... it's quite interesting, your setting session, explanation. Good, good. Do you have any song you, requests? No, no. Song? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, really, lah, I'm practicing to be a DJ. I'm going to be mm -hmm. a lousy one, but what to do? So anyway, guys, uh, so that's all. Uh, today's class was a little bit long because we did the introduction, because some of you are new. But uh, future classes, it'll be very short. Usually the class should be less than one hour. Oftentimes, it'll be the maximum about 36 minutes and 14 seconds long. That's about it, right? Not more than that. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, so, uh, if there are no questions, I would like to uh, ask all of you to be in that WhatsApp group. Very important. Be in the WhatsApp group. Make sure you have access to all the materials on your off. It's all there already, right? So, that's a convenience. And I believe that the, the session will be recorded as well. So, some of you... Let's say, for example, you're working and you can't participate, don't worry about it because work is very important. Some of you may even miss the class because you're working. Don't worry about that as well. We have the recordings. And nowadays, it's, you know, with technology, we, we in, in my class, even if you're not able to be here because you're working, trust me, it's no issue, right? Focus on your work because work is important. Some of you may even have family issues, right? Maybe your parents are sick or the child is sick. Attend to that first. Those things are also very important. Okay. And along the way, I will be assisting you. As I've told every class the last time, and some of you may know, try to submit, make sure, not say try, but make sure you submit within the deadline. Because guys, when you submit your assignment within the deadline, I will mark it very fast, probably by within 24 hours or so, I would have marked it. 
within 48 hours, you get your mark already. And that way, I can see that if some of you have not answered correctly and you're getting a low mark, I can still go back to you and tell you what you've done wrong, and then you can resubmit. Uh, so in my class, you cannot fail. There is just no way to fail my papers on this course, as far as I'm concerned, right? If you want to fail, Felicia, if you want to fail this class, you have to try really hard. Mm -hmm. And well, probably you will not succeed. <laughs> you will not succeed unless you do not submit, okay? And as you know, in the assignments, I told you there's a word count. Keep to the word count. Do not exceed the word count, right? Keep it within that. There's, there is a maximum, but there's no minimum. So, Felicia, if you want to submit your assignment with three words, you just submit a, a word, uh, your assignment, written there three words, using only three words also can. The words could be, I don't know. I will still mark it. <laughs> you probably still get one mark. <laughs> so, my point is, um, if you submit within the deadline, I can assist you. Now, if you submit late, what happens? If you submit late, you get your mark late as well. Why? Because I've moved on. I've set that time to mark your paper and you've submitted two, three days later, I've gone on to do other things. And then later I'll come back. And when I come back and I mark your paper, you will not get an opportunity for resubmission if you have a problem with your grade uh, because there's no time already because you've moved on. So trying to stay within the class, if there are any major issues, you can always, uh, you can always discuss that. But otherwise, uh, the guidance will be there. You will be able to complete your assignment, uh, I can assure you. Okay. Um, so there are no questions. I thank you all for participating. I thank you all for coming in. I really look forward to seeing you all again uh, next Sunday. Okay, guys. All right. So with that, uh, <clears throat> I'll say sorry, bye. Prof. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just want to check uh, the notes that you just shared with us uh, will mm. also be downloaded in your rocks. Yes, yes. Uh, a good point. Uh, all the notes that I share with you, whatever I do with you here, I put it up on Eurox as well. It should be okay. there. In fact, yeah. there are already additional notes already there as well. Uh, but whatever yeah, I it is, saw a different, that... different set of notes. Uh, different. Yeah. Of course, uh, I think there was SKC notes or something, something like that. But ours also, we will give it to you. No issue. Right? Okay, so, thank you. Uh, good question. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. about the uh, assignment? Is it the, the anything related to the assignment or the notes is inside? Uh, already inside the Eurox as well? Yeah, I mean, whatever we did just now is in Eurox. There's some additional notes there as well. It's all got to do with the assignment, of course. That's Trying for sure. To go through that first. Yeah, just, just go through that and then you'll find that you find a lot of materials uh, there to help you answer the question. Any other, anyone, anyone else have any questions, just in case? All right. All right. Yeah, feel free to ask any question. There are no stupid questions. Right? At least we can all benefit from it. Even on WhatsApp, uh, if you have something, uh, I don't usually answer anything on WhatsApp, but uh, you can discuss with your uh, friends on WhatsApp as well. No harm in that one. Okay. Right. So thank you. Yeah. Zamri, also thank you for joining us. Hopefully, we'll see more cameras on so we'll know what you look like. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, thank you, Khalifa, as well. Khalifa is my class monitor. Uh, I appointed her without her permission. <laughs> okay, guys, so thank so you very much.